Hello, my name is Jim Colothius and I'm a director within Treasury's Financial Risk Management Division. In this presentation, I will be talking about the new financial arrangement provisions that are now in force since the GSF's enactment from 1 December last year and the linkages between these provisions and the whole of state financial risk management framework currently being developed by Treasury. This presentation is divided into three parts. The first is around the GSF and the financial risk management in context. The second we'll talk about part six of the GSF Act specifically, including key changes and an implementation update. And the third we'll talk about updating the whole of state financial risk management framework. Part six of the GSF came into force on the 1st of December 2018 and replaces the financial arrangement provisions previously contained within the PAFA Act. These provisions, together with the financial risk management policies currently being developed, are intended to enable good risk management practices across the sector, with the ultimate aim of ensuring the long-term sustainability of the state's finances. These aims are consistent with the financial management principles outlined in the Fiscal Responsibility Act, by supporting the state's AAA credit rating and reputation, while also enabling agencies and government to deliver on its priorities without taking on undue or unnecessary risk. The key principles underpinning good risk management are identification, quantification and mitigation. As I will explain later, risk management is a responsibility shared by all and we all have a role to play in its effective implementation. What we hope to achieve through these changes is excellent management of the state's finances and balance sheet by managing risks more efficiently. This means optimising risks taken by the state so that the downside can be managed effectively while upside opportunities can also be taken advantage of. Such risk optimisation can be made at the service delivery level and also at the balance sheet level, that is, optimising risks relating to the financial capital supporting service delivery. Although this is a treasury goal, it is not an end in itself. The benefits of better risk management extend to the whole sector and should be seen within the whole of state context. For example, improving the management of the state's liquidity by pooling resources can help avoid the hidden costs of agencies undertaking activities that may make sense on an agency by agency basis but end up costing the state. Removing such inefficiencies can help free up resources that can then be used to fund government priorities. Moving forward, we want to move away from the financial arrangements approvals process being merely a compliance exercise. Agencies should consider this process as a way to help better manage their financial risks by using it as a tool to identify, quantify and mitigate, as well as promote early engagement with Treasury and or TCOR. So why are we doing this? The main driver is that both legislation and policy settings are now quite old and outdated. The PAFA Act was over 30 years old and the Treasury Risk Management Framework, TPP 077, is over 10 years old. By updating both of these instruments, we are looking to bring financial risk management into the 21st century and also better align the risk management framework with the underpinning legislation. For example, the Foreign Exchange Risk Management Policy was released in July last year and further policies are due to be released in the next little while. As a result of this, we expect that processes will be more efficient and timely, enabling agencies to focus on service delivery. Agencies will have clearer guidance and better understanding of their risk management responsibilities. And the state as a whole will be in a better position to take advantage of future developments and opportunities in financial management. To better support financial risk management at the whole of state level, Treasury established its ALCO in 2015. This is an advisory body to the Treasury Secretary, comprised of Treasury and other New South Wales government sector executives, and its main remit is to oversight and promote the effective management of the state's significant financial risks. Treasury's Financial Risk Management Division was established to support both the ALCO and the sector in managing financial risk and achieves this through having responsibility for the financial arrangements approvals process, developing the financial risk management framework and policy settings, providing risk management advice to the sector, and monitoring and reporting whole of state financial risks. Turning now to the second part of the presentation, the enactment of the GSF Act has resulted in a number of changes 
as well as some new financial arrangements that will now require approval. The changes are designed to improve the flexibility of the approvals process as well as streamline it so that agencies can get the approvals they need quicker. Process changes include removing the need in certain cases of having to get the Governor's approval, the Treasurer being able to approve financial arrangements via delegation, the ability to tailor approvals to a variety of needs, either from the very general to the very specific, and greater use of Treasurer's directions which makes it easier to adapt to changing circumstances. In addition, some other changes have been made to allow for the more effective administration and oversight of financial arrangements. These include investment powers now being replaced by approvals. Approvals are now on a to-do basis rather than an exemption from doing something basis. The ability to revoke and vary approvals rather than requiring new approvals. And the clarification and inclusion of certain financial arrangements such as operating leases. In addition to the changes just described, the GSF Act also includes a number of new arrangements, which are in addition to more traditional ones such as borrowing and investing. These are operating leases. Now there is consistency with the incoming accounting standard changes, supplier finance arrangements, bank guarantees, and social benefit bonds. We now turn to the financial risk management framework. The overarching financial risk management framework is being reconceptualized to comprise three core elements. These are the legislative and policy, institutional and behavioral. Taken together, these three elements will help embed financial risk management in all of our day-to-day -day operational thinking. Taking each in turn now, legislation and policy includes the GSF Act and financial risk management policies, which I have already spoken about. The second element is that of institutional, and the diagram you see here shows how the various actors all fit in together with their various roles and responsibilities. ALCO, as mentioned earlier, has prime responsibility for the oversight and management of state significant financial risks and looks at these from a whole of state perspective. Treasury, through the Financial Risk Management Division, helps to support ALCO in its remit and also monitors whole of state financial risks, has ongoing engagement with agencies to support the risk management process, the financial arrangement process, and in the development and application of policy. Agencies in their service delivery capacity are expected to identify their risks early on, quantify and communicate these risks to Treasury and T-Corp, and work together with Treasury and T-Corp to manage these risks. T-Corp, which is the state's financial services arm and faces the markets, has an execution role. It can advise agencies and Treasury on specific risk management strategies, and once these strategies have been agreed to, can help agencies execute these with financial markets. Finally, there is the behavioural element, which is where agencies have a key role. As I mentioned previously, going forward, the process needs to focus more on identification, quantification and management of financial risks, rather than simply being a compliance exercise. To this end, we expect that agencies will engage with Treasury or T-Corp early on to unearth potential issues and develop risk management strategies and to be really thinking about their risks as they go through their various application processes. This engagement can be either through your Treasury Relationship Manager or your T-Corp Relationship Manager. We would like early engagement by agencies on their financial arrangements approvals and also to continually think about their risks. Thank you very much.